All right, welcome back everybody. Now, today we are going to be doing something that is just fun, okay? It's not even all that hard, but it's really fun. So, you might be wondering why I have a selection of food colored water and an Arduino in the middle. And you might also wonder what this little board here is. If you've seen my how to etch a circuit board with laser cutter, you might kind of know what it is. But what are we going to use it for today? Well, what we're going to do today is get back to something that I did when I was a kid, and that was do some photography. I mean, come on guys, I, I shoot videos, I love photography. It's sort of the core of, you know, I have electronics and I have photography, and I love those two things, and I love to mix them. So, what I did when I was younger was you know those like really cool water drop pictures or paint drops where you, you get you capture the, like the beautiful splash happening and everything well i was super into doing that but the way that i did it was i took a little dropper and a remote shutter release and dropped water and tried to time it perfectly and you know when you shoot a thousand pictures in an evening with this method, you're bound to get something, you know? And, and in fact, here, take a look at some of the pictures that I got when I was younger. And, you know, that's really awesome. But the way the pros do it is not through dropper and like all this stupid stuff. It's basically a semi-automated system. So in that circuit board video, I, I asked you guys, what did you think this was? And although I kind of dropped what it was a little bit in the PCB, in the designing of it, uh, it's a photo interrupter. And the way that we're going to use it here is we're going to take water drops and drop them through the beam of this interrupter here. And you can see I've already written a little bit of code running on here. If you look at the onboard LED, hopefully you can see it through all the lights. If I pass through this beam here, the light blinks. So that is set up already. It's not very complex code and we will have to modify it a little bit and we'll definitely go over it. You know what? Let me, I have paper here. Let's, you know, let's draw this out. The basic idea is this. We have our plate or whatever we're dropping onto at the bottom and we have a dropper up here at the top and somewhere close to the top I'm going to install this little break beam device right so as the water drop is dropped out of here it comes down and eventually splashes on my plate here this is going to fall at a, well, not a constant rate, but a constant acceleration due to gravity, right? So if we're accelerating at a constant rate and we drop from the same place, that's fairly important, although it's not super critical, I don't think. We'll find out soon. If you drop it and you go through the brake beam, you can then have pretty precise timing if you know the distance from here to here, or at least you can, you know, kind of figure it out as you go, you can pretty precisely know when you need to trigger the camera to capture the little splash. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. And yeah, there are all sorts of formulas. I could figure out if this was three feet, you know, do some math about the, the acceleration. But honestly, what I have programmed on here is a little bit of code that lets me just tweak it through serial port commands so I can just say okay we need you know trigger the camera when it's here instead of when it's here now you will notice I said here and not all the way down here there is going to be a slight delay from the time that the Arduino triggers it to the time that it actually captures the picture so we will have to do a little bit of tweaking there uh, and a little bit of tweaking up here and eventually we should hopefully get some good results uh, so yeah, that's the basic idea now apart from making this little board Which I will definitely have fritzing layouts and schematics in the description We also need to find some way to trigger our camera. So 
I've bought here for my camera a remote shutter release. So this is just your regular little, you know, clicky button and plugs into the camera, lets you trigger the camera. So what we need to do is wire this up with some transistors to here so that we can basically fake this switch. Now, I'm gonna do most of that off camera, uh, but here's the basic gist of it, okay? In here, there are really two buttons. So there's the half press focus button and then the full press shutter button. So in this wire, what I'm expecting to see are basically three active little wires, a ground wire, a shutter wire, and a focus wire. So what we need to do, and I've figured this out through quite a few years of kind of fiddling with these, is you can't just trigger them both instantly. So you can't just wire them up to one transistor. Uh, you, you have to kind of do them sequentially because the camera's assuming that there's a person pushing this and that takes time between the focus and the shutter click. So I'm going to wire up two transistors to this wire or really cut this, this part off and wire two transistors to the end of this here and wire that into our Arduino and hopefully that should allow us to trigger this camera up here. So that's ba basically all we're gonna do. I am gonna kind of go through a couple of these things without too much detail. What I do here, this is for my Nikon camera that I use to film. It's a little bit different for every camera. So I'll give you the basic gist of it and then you can tune it as you see fit for your own setup. All right, now before we go any further, I haven't really talked much about this, so just so that you guys have a basic understanding of what's going on here. On the one side, this clear little guy right here, this is a in infrared uh, LED. So it's the same kind of little LED that's in the front of your TV remote uh, or TV Be Gone or anything like that. It's just an infrared little LED. So all this is doing is just being powered from the uh, Node MCU ESP power bus here. So I have a little, uh, I think it's like a 20 something ohm resistor here. And this is just always on. This little black guy right here is a photo transistor, an infrared photo transistor. So basically what that means is that if there's infrared light being shined into it, it allows power to pass from one side to the other on these little legs here. That's sort of what the setup here is. This little guy is hooked up to the analog input and this guy is just always putting out infrared light. And when we break that beam, when I you know, move my finger or the wire drop goes in between these two, it'll change the output from this guy here which we can then read on the ESP or Arduino. So that's really all that's going on there. It's nothing too complicated. Uh, and if you're interested in the schematic or the layout for this, it's definitely in the description down below. All right, let's now move on to cutting this guy apart and figuring out what we need to do with it. All right, so there we go. Now, I, guys, I know this looks like a total mess right here. And well, yeah, it is a mess, but this should work, fingers crossed anyway. So just to give you a quick little rundown of what I did here, basically, 
left this guy wired up, I had to move the ground wire around a little bit to accommodate all the other stuff here. Uh, so what I have here is we got our wire here connected up to the breadboard. So white is ground, yellow is the focus, and red is the shutter wire. So we need to have a common ground connection here so that basically the camera knows when we're closing our transistor switch. We have at the back here, we have two little uh, 2222A transistors. Uh, you, can, you should also be able to use 3904 transistors just fine as well. We have a couple of resistors. These are just 1K resistors and they are being used as current limiting resistors and those are connected to pins one and two, I believe on here, digital pins one and two. So digital pins one and two will be what we use to control the transistors. The transistors are connected to those pins, but they are also on the left side of the transistor, which is the emitter, I believe. The left side is connected to ground. So that's what all these black wires here, all these black wires, everything basically right along here is ground. And then on the right side, we have the connections going to focus or shutter. So it's really messy here because I'm using some big jumper wires because I just don't have anything else around right now. And assuming this all works, I will likely make a custom circuit board for all of this, uh, including you know, a nice connection to that guy there. But for now, this works pretty well. So now that we have this all set up, we have to do a couple things. First, we should just test to make sure that this works. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm basically going to write a little Arduino script that triggers pin, the focus pin, and then triggers the shutter pin. And hopefully the camera should take a picture, which if I'm awesome, you'll see somewhere in this top right corner here right now. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is basically go over the main code here. So let's jump over to the computer now and kind of just go through the code. It's honestly, it's pretty simple. So you guys should be able to get your way through it without really any explanation, but that's what we do here on it kind of works. We go over everything just so that there's no confusion. All right, let's go and do that. All right guys, so just before we get to the code, I wanted to show you guys this really cool project from Sayatin. I think I said that right, but hopefully. Uh, anyways, this is a really cool little project. It is basically ultrasonic virtual eyes for blind people. And this is like, a, it's a really cool project because you know a lot of time people with disabilities don't get thought about very much. Uh, especially from the DIY sector of, you know, us programmers making things. And basically it uses a little ultrasonic range finder, an Arduino Nano, and a little piezo speaker and mounted on some glasses. And it just kind of reads the distance and makes sound in your ear as you get closer and further away from things in front of you. So. It's just a really cool project and I wanted to show you guys if you're interested in this project There's definitely a link in the description down below uh, But yeah, this is really cool And if you have a project like this or your own really cool thing that you want to show Definitely send an email to it kind of works inc at gmail.com again That's also in the description and just let me know what your project is and I'll be happy to to show it to the world. I really want to spread the idea of it kind of works, building your own things, even if they're not perfect. All right, now let's get to the code. All right, guys, so here is the code as per usual. So I know it looks a little bit long, but just bear with me, guys. It's really not that big. So up at the top, we have a couple of libraries. You guys know I love Metro, such a great timing library. Uh, we're also going to include the ESP Wi-Fi library. And although it's not really part of the main code, we do have to forcibly tell the ESP to disconnect from Wi-Fi because in testing, I found that 
even when you're not using it, it will automatically attempt to connect to the last network and that just throws off the whole analog digital converter. The whole ADC is just messed up from it. So that's why we're including that. And if you're not doing it on an ESP, then you don't need that and you don't need this line. All right, so part of the way that this whole thing works is we're basically going to maintain a rolling average of the analog input. And whenever we notice a change of, of some threshold, we will trigger the camera. So re we really don't care what the change is, but we want to see that change and then trigger the camera. Uh, down here, we have a little camera delay. This is basically something that we can modify for when it detects something, how long it should take before triggering the camera. Have some pin definitions, D1 and D2, focus and shutter pins, and a little timer here that basically prevents repeat triggers from the same drop. So after a second, then we can drop another drop and do this again. All right, so here's our array of stored values of of average values. So this will be where we store our rolling average. And then in setup, it's pretty simple. We're going to, like I said, we have to forcibly disconnect from Wi-Fi. We're going to start up the serial line, although you won't need it, you know, later on, once you kind of nail everything down, it's useful to have for debugging and we'll also be able to put, give some input for different timing. Pin mode, well, we're setting the A0 to input. We have the LED focus and shutter pins will be output, and we will set the LED to high, which of course on the ESP really means off because that's just the way they do things here. So init average is a little function that I have here that basically it just fills up that array with analog values when it starts up. Okay, coming down into loop, we're going to check for change and only execute this code if there is a change and our timer is within the correct amount of time to let us trigger. So check for change up at the top. If the index has hit its maximum value, i.e. we've hit the end of our array, then we will reset our index back to zero thus giving us the rolling average. Then we grab our analog reading and find the average, just loop through, add everything up and divide by the number of samples. And then here's where the kind of interesting part comes in. So this is check for change and it will basically return true if there has been a large change. So we're going to take the absolute value of the most recent reading minus the average and if that's over our threshold, we will then, well, we need to increment our index for next time, but mainly we will be returning true. So we will say, yes, there was a change. Uh, and otherwise, again, increment the index. This is a little bit of lazy coding and then return false to say, no, nope, it's just another reading, nothing crazy happening. So this is really, guys, this is the most complex part of the code and it's not really that complex. All right, so once we've actually determined that a drop has been dropped and we are allowed to trigger the camera based on our timer, we then delay for some short amount of time. Remember going back to that drawing, this is the distance from the sensor to the point where we need to trigger the camera. Then we call up trigger camera, which is very simple. All it does is set the focus pin to high, wait a small amount of time, set the shutter pin to high, wait a little bit more time, and then reset them back to low. That's all it does. So that triggers the camera. You guys saw the little demo there. Blink the LED and then reset our timer. And that's really, that's the majority of the code here. The other stuff down at the bottom, handle serial, is our way to easily change some of these variables without uploading new code. So basically we're going to wait and look for any available data and then if the first character is a t for threshold we will then parse that data into an int and if it's more than zero we will then modify it 
give a little print and wait a little while just because we're also spitting out the analog data. And then if it's a C instead of a T, we will also parse the int. And this is for the camera delay. So we have the threshold of what actually constitutes a big enough change to be a drop of water falling versus just background noise. And then C, which is the delay from when we detect a drop to the point where we trigger the camera. So we grab that as an int and we do basically the same little process. And that's basically it. Otherwise, any other data that we get, if we put in an X or a Z, we're just going to read it, get rid of it, and, and discard it. And that's it, guys. This is really all the code that we have to go over today. All right, so now that we've got this out of the way, let's finally kind of bring this all together. I'm gonna spend a little while setting up the rig down in the basement, and we will actually get to test this out. All right, so here is the shooting rig for all of this. It's uh, pretty scary looking. So up at the top where normally I have my camera mounted, I have the little uh, brake beam sensor right there. So if I run my finger through that, see we get the camera taking a picture. So what I have other than that little sensor, and here's the Arduino board. We got my camera here, and it's just got a macro lens on it shooting at this dish here. I have my strobe light, and this is actually pretty important to use a strobe, and at the very least use the onboard camera strobe, because believe it or not, the shutter in the camera, even if it's going like a thousand, one one thousandth of a second, just it doesn't capture those little details nearly as well as if you have some sort of a strobing light. This is really what helps us stop the motion and our little trigger here is what helps us time that motion perfectly. All right, so now that we've kind of gone over all of that, uh, I'm gonna just try shooting some demo pictures for you guys and we'll see how they come out and you guys can uh, watch along with me on the little time-lapse camera there. All right, guys, so just a couple little things to share with you guys. Uh, you'll notice that I do keep sort of changing the height of where my hand is and where I'm dropping it. And that's because even a couple millimeters difference totally changed the end resulting shot. So, you know, in the future, maybe I'll go ahead and make a, an automated dripping rig. But for now, honestly, this stuff looks really, really good. I mean, just take a look at these results here. This is like my favorite shot. I might even say this is one of my top 10 shots ever. It's just, it's crystal clear. It did take some dialing in of the focus, but man, once you get that dialed in, they are just beautiful. And here you can actually see this one I still really, really like, but again, it's a little bit out of focus. Uh, and it just, it, it just takes practice. It just takes time. Uh, again, another one of my favorite shots. It's just like, it's just so cool to see these super tiny moments captured just so perfectly. So definitely guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, get subscribed to the channel. If you have any questions, go to itkindaworks.com slash forum. And if you just wanna help the channel out, go to patreon.com slash itkindaworks and toss in whatever you can. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.